Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Zero Downside podcast. I'm Dr. Wade McKenna, and as always, we're sponsored by MoabTexas.com. Um, today's episode, the, the we're trying to knock some of these shorts out where we can give people the content that they are looking for when they're in our clinic and make it where it's something you can refer back to. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that from a science perspective and your medical professional, which I am, that you're going to get not only what's in the book on, on some of this content, but our personal experience with it as uh, as a physician and uh, taking care of hundreds and thousands of people actually over the last 26 years of private practice. But some of it, more importantly, in my own experience, as a patient and a physician and as someone that's able to read and interpret the scientific literature for you, I think that's important. Um, so I, with that, the question today is, about what's my go-to favorite peptide. If you have to pick a peptide, what's the one? And I think today we're going to focus on the growth hormone releasing peptides or the growth hormone releasing hormone-like peptides uh, or hormone-like substances because it's a combination one that, that we recommend usually. We will cycle people on and off, but today's about ipamorelin and CJC1295. That combination, and there is some minimal controversy out there because the FDA banned all these um, a year ago, and CJC-1295 in particular. There are some pretty significant voices in the peptide world that will express a difference in this opinion when it comes to what is the best way to increase or support your growth hormone function. I don't think there's any controversy that the peptide therapy is the best way to do that. I think there's a little scattergory kind of coverage between hexamorelin, uh, sumorelin, ipamorelin, and CJC-1295. I do think, and what I would do um, from a patient's perspective, is I think the, the go-to is ipamorelin CJC-1295 because it's kind of, in my mind, that best bang for your buck. And it's an easy peptide to take. The complication rate is extremely low. I think the only reason that there are people out there that will say tessamorelin or a tessamorelin ipa complex, which I think is a great way to cycle on and off, is there is a we we can through the the labs we use take ipamorelin with tesamorelin as a combination. I think ipamorelin with CJC twelve ninety five is still the best bang for your buck as far as overall potency, without any potential significant downside. With ipamorelin, you don't see changes in prolactin levels. You don't see changes in in, in you're, you're not upping cortisol levels. So you're selectively picking out increased growth hormone function. And you're not supplementing growth hormone function. I read a lot lately on there is a a move out there again, and this happens every now and then, where people want the quickest, easiest hack in the world, just direct growth hormone supplementation. There's not a lot of people that I would recommend doing that on. Certainly in someone that is maybe not getting, if you're completely broken, if you've had a pituitary adenoma, you have no pituitary function left, do I think that ipamorel and CJC-1295 is going to give you the gains that direct growth hormone supplementation would know? But we're talking about the patient that's over 40, that metabolically has been broken by life, right? So this was a divinely created thing. Um, this this body that we walk around in, we've broken it, or society has broken it, but stress, every Tylenol you've ever taken, cortisol, fatigue, not sleeping, processed food, it's very difficult to keep this body functioning the way it was designed to function. I don't even think it's possible anymore. I think thousands of years ago, before we were so tainted, 
I, I think it's very difficult to eat clean. I think it's very difficult to have the minerals, vitamins, and, and, and nutritional value of food anymore without some supplements. So that being said, it's really about growth hormone and secondary IGF-1 levels. This is the, in my mind, easiest, best way in, in a cost-effective format that is easy for a patient to navigate the waters in. We, there's a lot of, we have a lot of discussions in our clinic because there's, there's a list of about 40 peptides that I think are incredibly important. The stem cell, again, there's 7,000 naturally occurring peptides in the human body. The stem cell can secrete them all. So we don't even have to tell that what to do. Your body can respond. If I'm going to write you peptide for peptide therapy, I need to know what the symptom is I'm trying to take care of and what the overall metabolic function, like where are you starting? For us, one of the easiest hacks, easiest go-to with IPA-CJC is because it's it's very supportive of your overall growth hormone levels. It has been found to make a fairly significant difference in your pituitary function. The pituitary growth hormone isn't just secreted all day, every day. It's secreted in a very pulsatile fashion. And what you want is when you get that pulsatile secretion of growth hormone, especially that that late night, early morning, 3, 3 a.m., 5 a.m., big boost of, of that pulsatile growth hormone, you want to have your pituitary supported to where that growth hormone is, is at a higher effective level than what you would have produced completely metabolically broken. And you want it to be where those receptors are bound a little bit to keep it from just going away as fast. That would be the combination of ipamorelin and CJC-1295. There, there may be a little bit of downside with the 1295 part of this, just because there is a little bit more flushing for some people. When you add CJC-1295, there's not a lot of flushing with just ipamorelin or tesamorelin by themselves. Hexamorelin, some of the others, there's not a lot of side effects as far as flushing or local site reaction, but the downside of the the dysregulation maybe of ghrelin or of prolactin or of cortisol, you don't want to be taking something that, to increase muscle mass. And, and let's just go through this real quick. Here's what IPA-CJC should do for someone. It's about everything really is about increasing your growth hormone function and your susceptibility or ability to use growth hormone. That is about pituitary support. That's the growth hormone releasing hormones and growth hormone releasing peptides. So this would be my, my, my body hack of choice. If you're going to want to recover from a workout, you want to have increased bone density. It's about bone mineral deposition, significantly increased with Ipamorel and CJC. A decreased visceral adiposicity, meaning you're not maintaining so much fat in your belly. And it was actually used as a drug in HIV studies years ago, and it made dramatic difference in the visceral deposition of fat. When we're trying to reduce body fat, I think that the, the crucial part of that is not just the, the GLP-1s, because you don't want to just reduce body weight, you want to reduce body fat. And the way that your body is going to have to do that and maintain muscle mass is to maintain elevated levels of growth hormone. Um, the benefit of that is fairly significant on the cognitive side, cognitive abilities and mental clarity, decrease in depression, all noted with elevated growth hormone support peptide, in particular this combination. For certain, there's dramatic differences in your stages of deep sleep. It supports deep sleep, non-REM sleep. So there is a, a specific peptide called delta sleep-inducing peptide, DSIP, IPA-CJC absolutely has been found to have that same kind of overlight effect where you support deep non-REM sleep. And so you feel better, you get better rest. It helps support the growth hormone secretion at night where you need to be getting some sleep. It increases your bone mineral density. So your bone density, it, it changes dramatically the ability to process triglycerides and fats. 
It's really important in gut health. The, the upside in our practice is when you have someone that's just kind of metabolically broken and someone is wanting one therapy to help, I need to feel better, right? This isn't one of those things that you need to support for six months to notice a difference. Most people on IPA C, CJC combination, or the, and we're just going to call it the, the growth hormone support peptide programs. Most people in our practice that start at IPA Morellin will notice a difference in the first several weeks. Women, it, uh, un, there's not a lot of difference usually between the, how a peptide affects a woman and a man. On some of them, there are certainly on the sexual wellness peptides. There's more to be gained from, from women and men in different areas of uh, sexual function. But with IPA CJC, women seem to be able to get much better mineral bone density deposition, like denser bone, than, than men will, and they see a much quicker result. It makes it easier to recover from a workout. It changes your levels of fatigue and energy level. And women in particular have been found to make, a, it makes a significant difference in their processing of lipids. So I think that when someone has high lipid levels and they're trying to lose some body fat and they're wanting to be able to recover from a workout because when you're not doing anything forever, you're sore everywhere. You also can't sleep because you're not burning calories. And if you do starve yourself, you're not burning fat. The way to break that metabolically broken cycle in our practice, one of the go-to kind of peptides for us would be growth hormone support. And I think it's an easy, effective, very non-controversial way to do that that's extremely safe. So it meets all of my, you know, my, my, me and my smart like staff with the, the name of the podcast. It meets all of our requirements, meaning that it's extremely effective. It is genuinely easy to manage a patient going through this type of a program because the doses are kind of standard. You start out maybe at 0.1 cc up to maybe, so 100 micrograms, maybe up to 300 micrograms a night. There are some protocols out there talking about twice a day. I'm not a big fan of that because I think you can saturate the receptors and too much is you're, you're, you, you kind of maybe not getting the overall effectiveness that you would get if you just lowered your dose and did it correctly. There are some nuances to doing it right. I think one of the more important things is that you don't you want an empty stomach. So it's the last injection of the day for me. The, and the way I've done that is it's the only shot that I'll go ahead and pull up and put it in a cup because it's it, just before bedtime. You want an empty stomach maybe for to, to get best absorption of this past the blood-brain barrier to affect the pituitary. You want an empty stomach. So 90 minutes of an empty stomach, no food before or after. That's the reason also IPA CJC is really well published when you start looking at intermittent fasting protocols, by the way, just as a, as a quick aside. But I think that because there's some nighttime peptides I'll do with melanotan and some of the others, I won't do it all at the same time. We don't stack a lot of that if I'm doing it after dinner or on dinner. But the last peptide of the night, that shot's already pulled up, go, use alcohol, and that's the, the go-to because it's the easiest way to get the best effect, and, and that's, that's, it's important. There's not a lot of things you can do to mess it up other than take too much or take it at the wrong time of the day or take it on a full stomach, but you're, you're not going to hurt yourself with that, but you're not getting what you paid for if you do that is probably the best way to say that. So for us, um, IPA CJC, last dose of the night, five nights a week, we give people two weeks a two-day dose off of it. That's usually when I tell them to take their GLP-1s is one of the two days that they're not taking their, their growth hormone uh, releasing peptide protocols or whatever we have you on. The go-to in our practice usually is IPA-CJC. Unless someone has some flushing, we'll switch them to ipa Cimarellin, or we'll have them on just Cimarellin and go back and forth between Cimarellin and IPA. There is a lot of individuality with how you respond if we treat the patient. We, we, there's not a one little cookie cutter thing for everyone. There are some programs where you can try to, we know where to start, but then we're going to modify things based on your results. And I think that that's, it, it needs to be very patient centric. And so I think that's for us, that's our discussion on IPA CJC. I think it's probably the more, 
certainly one of the most important steps in overall muscle recovery, maintenance of muscle mass. And if you're going to reduce body fat and you're going to increase muscle mass, it starts and ends with growth hormone levels. And so for us, that's the easiest, most effective, safest route to do that. Hopefully you got some really useful information out of that. I want to thank you again for your attention to this. I appreciate you going through the playlist that we're putting up on the peptide therapies and some of the shorter content. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification button so you get notified when the next episodes come up. Uh, again, want to genuinely thank all of our patients for the attention, the trust in taking care of you. And hopefully we're giving you a little bit easier access to some of the science behind the thinking that goes into what we do. Thank you again.